everyone, it's Sharonda from Pay Your Weight, and today I'm going to be reviewing The Batman, which will hit theaters this Friday. This film is directed by Matt Reeves, and it stars Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, Colin Farrell, Paul Dano, Jeffrey Wright, Andy Serkis. There is a lot of people in this film, but I do not have time or the lung capacity to name them all. Um, but this film centers around when the Riddler, a sadistic serial killer, begins murdering key political figures in Gotham. Batman is then forced to investigate the city's corruption and also question his family's involvement. So for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome, hello, so glad you came, I hope you stay. I'll tell you what I liked about the film, what I didn't like about the film, and should you pay your way to see the Batman in theaters this weekend? All right, so this is gonna be a spoiler-free review. I wanna make sure that I protect everyone's viewing experience before they walk into this movie. We have waited so long to get this version of the Batman. I wanna make sure that you walk in on a clean slate, all right? So, going into what did I enjoy about this film? And there's so many things, and I know that people get scared when I start talking about some of the technical elements of a film, but I'm telling you, it's for good reason. You know, before I can really delve into the acting performances, I really have to give kudos to uh, Michael Giacchino. He's an Academy Award winning composer. Um, the score for the Batman is just on another level. It's so good. It's so good at its use of sound throughout the film, um, especially as you get a lot of different type of genres. There's some, there's some kind of horror elements and just by the use of sound where you can hear footsteps coming, but you can't see anything. It's these little things that Michael adds into the composing for all of um, this film that it just takes it up just a few more notches of already a spectacular film to watch. Um, I know we're probably gonna talk a lot about this in award season. I hate even bringing up awards, but baby, when I tell you that Michael put his foot into the score for this film, he did the dang on thing, and it really helps elevate the film in so many different ways, and I hope that a lot of people watching it, that they can really appreciate just the use of sound, the score that is used, even for the different characters. It's just so well done. But as how Gotham looks as a city, Gotham looks good, y'all. It still has the dark, that dark tone to it, these dark characteristics, but Gotham just feels like a different world that I have not seen before in another Batman film. Um, the production design for this, it just looks so good. Um, I think people are really going to love the look and the vibe of Gotham, especially as we get into different set pieces throughout the course of the film. Now, one of the things that I do appreciate about the Batman, this is not going to be your typical comic book movie, okay? Let me say that one more time for the people in the back in case they didn't hear me. This is not going to be your typical type of comic book movie, but I think that's what makes the Batman so fun to watch. There are so many different elements that you get out of this film. There is a horror aspect, especially as we start the film. It's like a, a murder mystery, but like a psychological thriller. You know, one of my favorite genres is psychological thrillers. There is this case that they're working on these political figures keep ending up dead and the way that they use when the movie starts there's kind of like a, a noir vibe to it but then it quickly turns into a horror vibe but then as we get into kind of this this team up that we see between um gordon um and batman you know you get into this kind of like detective like mystery you know, psychological thriller. And also too, I know this is about to sound crazy, but there was even a scene where I was like, this is giving me Western vibes as well. And once you watch the movie, you will know exactly what scene that I'm talking about, but you can tell that Matt Reeves is a true fan of film, of the different genres of film, um, you know, that the world has. And I just love how it was so effortlessly to weave all of these different genres into a comic book film. It literally feels like I am just watching a regular film, I would say from like the 90s or even the early 2000s. Just those movies where you get like just a good murder mystery going, a good story, a whodunit, you're trying to figure this out. It just was giving, it was giving me all the good vibes. Yeah, I was like, I cannot believe that this is a dang old Batman movie, but I am totally here for it. And I like the direction that Matt takes to not make this the same Batman story we have heard over and over again. We've had so many conversations on this, you know, with the Superman films, with the Batman films, like how are we going to make this different? And I would have to say while sitting through the Batman, it felt like a completely different story. So much 
much that we get a completely different type of Bruce Wayne. A lot of people are gonna say this, baby, when I say uh, Robert Pattinson was giving me emo, emo vibes, emo teenager vibes, okay? Like I'm gonna lock myself in a room and just listen to uh, music all day long. I don't wanna be bothered by nobody. That is the vibe of Bruce Wayne that we're seeing. And honestly, even though we're introduced with a lot of the villains that we know, the Riddler, Penguin, this feels like a prequel type of movie. I want to adjust those expectations. You're not going to see a lot of Bruce Wayne. You're going to get the prequel of what it took to get Bruce Wayne to become the Batman. And I appreciate that. There's mistakes that are going to be made. There's, there's things that he is going to have to go through to really understand what his true purpose is. And I think because Matt Reeves decides to take a different focus for this film, I think that's what actually makes it enjoyable. But I can't just, Robert Pattinson, baby, I don't wanna hear y'all slander this man's name never ever again in life, okay? Y'all gonna put some respect on Robert Pattinson's name. Um, his filmography that he's had in the past couple of years has been absolutely fantastic. And just the acting that he gives to this character, even the changes in this voice, if you know what Robert Pattinson sounds like, um, the, just the simple change in his voice to actually become Bruce Wayne, baby, he, when I said he was given and he understood the assignment, okay, he understood it. Now, it's not just Robert Pattinson giving great performances in this film. I love what they do with, um, Alfred, because this is more of a prequel, we get a different version of Alfred played by Andy Serkis. I think that he plays very well, um, with Robert Pattinson, they have some good scenes together. We don't get as much as him as I would like, but I think it makes sense for his character where we meet him in this version of the Batman. Also to Paul Dano, I don't know what Paul Dano has been through in his life, but the way that he can play crazy mad men and make me think that something is really wrong with him, when I say that Paul Dano gives his all to the role of the Riddler, he is absolutely fantastic, loses himself within the role. If you've watched any of his previous work, when they announced that he was gonna be the Riddler, I was like, baby, Paul always just understands the assignment. I wasn't worried about it, but he definitely was the one to watch. One of the most memorable characters for me throughout the course of this film. Now, while we talking about losing ourselves in a role, Colin Farrell, first of all, this is how you do prosthetics. I know people hype up other films or they're like, oh my goodness, look at the transformation. They look so different. The whole time I was watching the movie, I was like, where is Colin Farrell? Because this is not him on, on the screen. This is not Colin Farrell right now. I can't see any version of him in any way, shape or form as the penguin. I like hair and makeup, baby. Y'all did that. I literally can't. I was watching the whole time. Like, I can't believe this is Colin Farrell. This is not Colin Farrell. This is somebody else playing him. I really love what Colin Farrell brings to the Penguin. I love this different take of the Penguin that we have. And I would say like for these characters, they're less of caricatures of the versions of, you know, these villains that we've grown up on through movies or even with the TV series. They are very serious characters, which helps you feel like you're lost in just a regular movie. Now, I also liked um, Jeffrey Wright. I love how he interacted with Robert Pattinson. I like Zoe uh, Kravitz as um, Selena. I do have a couple of issues with her character, but nothing that she did. I just don't think that there was enough meat on the story for her, but we're gonna get in that, into that when we get into the cons. The action is there. There is a fun car chase scene that I think they've already released that looks absolutely amazing on the screen, okay? It was giving me everything that I needed. There are some fun sequences that happen throughout the course of the film that I think a lot of people will be excited about. Just being able to see this different version of the Batmobile, you know, of the costume, because once again, this is not, this is not full-fledged, like, Batman, I know what I'm doing with my life. This is like still like kind of like younger. I'm still trying to figure my life out. Bruce Wayne, AKA the Batman. But I have to say that I really love what Matt Reeves did with this. Like he just took it to a different level. Give Matt Reeves whatever he wants to do. Just let this man do it. But even though I have a lot of things that I loved about this film, I do have a couple of issues. First, let's just start with the obvious. Three hour runtime, baby. There were moments where I felt that three hour runtime. I'm not gonna lie to you. The movie starts off cool as we're kind of getting into that horror element. And then after a while, it kind of like 
stalls out for a little bit and then it picks back up. And a lot of this has to do with, it feels like the Batman is more of a TV series. I would say if you could easily split this film into three different acts, I don't know if maybe it could be a critique that there were too many cooks in the kitchen because we do have a moment where we focus on the penguin or when we focus on the Riddler or when we're focusing on um, Catwoman or she's not really Catwoman in the film but yeah it's like we're having all these different characters and it felt like there was like three different storylines into one and it was like the movie could have ended twice. And I literally thought the movie was from the end, but I was like, hold on, homie, we got like two more hours left. Like, no, we still have another hour left. I will say the movie does drag at certain points. I'm not gonna tell y'all that you're not gonna feel these three hours because I definitely felt it and I watched this in the morning. So I just wanted to let y'all know. Now, because I do call, consider this to be more of a prequel, I will say that this is, you're not gonna get a lot of Bruce Wayne. And I don't know how people are going to necessarily feel about that because we're used to kind of like this arrogant Bruce Wayne who, you know, is this this rich, this rich man. He has his company. He's holding up his family's legacy. We don't really get that in this version of the Batman. I'm OK with it. We know that this is going to be turned into a franchise. We already know that there's spinoffs with some of these characters. You know, Penguin doesn't get as much time as I would like because I found his character so interesting. And also, too, there's a story that's introduced with Zoe Kravitz's character that I felt like they could have delved deeper into. I didn't feel like there was like this full character arc that was explored with her character. And there was a good story there, but it was kind of just like, OK, this is the story and we're gonna forget about it. And then we're gonna come back and it's just gonna like go from zero to 100 and you're just like, okay. Like, I don't think this was given what you thought it was given, but I guess it is what it is. But outside of those issues, I think a lot of people are gonna have fun with the Batman. It gives us something different that we haven't really seen, not only just with comic book films, but really with the Batman films. And at a time where so many people are saying, why continue to tell the same stories? Matt Reeves says, hold on, hold my beer. Let me show y'all how you can take a story that everyone knows and kind of flip it on its head and give you something different. Now there is something they do with the character towards the end of the film that I don't know how it really sat well with me. I'm interested to see everyone's reaction to that after they watch the film. Um, but yeah, what I would tell you to do with you and your coins for the Batman, I would tell you to pay go see this in theaters, okay? Pay go see this in theaters. You're gonna have a good time. This cast was acting, acting. Like I only shed a light on a couple of characters, but when I tell you that everyone, and I mean everybody in this film brings their A game, this is some of the most top notch acting I have seen in a comic book film that I've, honestly, this is a great ensemble cast. Like they just, baby, they're not making movies like this on a consistent basis anymore. So I don't wanna really hype this film up because I do feel like some people overhyped it a little bit too much. I'm gonna keep it 100 with y'all, but I really enjoyed this film. So I'm very interested to see what do you think of the Batman? When are you going to see it? Let me know in the comment section below. But those are my thoughts on the Batman. As always, my name is Sharonda from Hero Waits. And if you like what you saw today, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, share this video with your friends, and make sure you hit that notification bell. And I love you guys 3000. And until I see you again,